Welcome back, it's Peter Barwas here, cardiologist. Now today we're talking all things dissolving stents. That's right, you heard it, stents that go into the arteries of the heart and disappear. So a common question that I often get asked is, what do you think about these dissolving stents? Now we've had a few videos in this series on stents and what they are. Just to recap, stents are devices we placed within the arteries around the heart when they are blocked or diseased with plaque or cholesterol buildup that is causing symptoms of chest pain, what we call angina, or they might be used when somebody is having an acute problem such as a heart attack where we find a blockage with clot and we need to open up the artery. And these stents act like a scaffold to keep the artery open. The stents that we place in patients are made of metal and these metallic stents are made of various alloys. And these can be initially that was pure, pure stainless steel, but there are others that are made now of cobalt chromium, there are others with a bit more platinum metal or alloys in there. So these devices and these alloys and materials are designed to provide the strength to keep the artery open and they stay there for life. We've had a few videos that you've seen that focus on possible complications that happen within stents. And fortunately, this is still very low. As technology has improved over the last decade or so, stents have become better, more refined, and risks and complications, particularly of re-narrowing, have significantly declined. And generally that is less than 10% now, or even closer to 5% or less of patients who have a stent may come back in the future with a repeat problem inside that stent. So stents are very safe, but not without their long-term risks. So the, the holy grail, as we say, is, well, why don't we use a stent that opens the artery and then over time disappears? These dissolving stents, or what we call bioresorbable stents, where the material slowly over time breaks down and leaves nothing behind. That sounds a fascinating area. And the technology behind this goes back some time now. And the first generation of dissolving stents were made of a polymer or a plastic material. And there was a lot of excitement when these devices came to the market and were actually all, all FDA approved. These were made of a polylactic acid, this plastic material, that over the course of many years, two to three years, was meant to break down essentially leaving carbon dioxide and water and with nothing permanent behind. So the beauty of that is that the artery remains open, but there's no long-term device that stays within the artery. So there was a lot of excitement. Many studies, many um, papers came out looking at the benefits of these devices that were clinically being put into many patients because of the advantage of course, of not having a permanent metal stent. But we found over the course of three and four years and five years later, that there was a small increase in the risk associated with these first generation dissolving stents. And there was a risk of repeat procedures that the artery would re-narrow, or more worryingly, that clots could build up and cause a condition known as thrombosis. And we found that the study showed, and numerous studies were done, to compare the permanent metal stents versus the dissolving stents. We found that there was a significantly increased risk of complications with these plastic or polymer stents. So they were essentially withdrawn from the market. There are many other iterations and newer generations that many companies around the world are working on because we still believe in the promise of this technology. 
in having a device that does not remain in there for life, but can achieve what we want it to do to open up the artery and keep it open. Another series of dissolving stents is completely different to the polymer stents. And this is made of a metallic material containing magnesium. So these magnesium stents tend to behave a little more like the permanent stents. But over the course of two years, they dissolve and disappear, leaving nothing behind. Now, that is a very promising technology that has been approved in Europe, for example. It has a CE mark approval for clinical use. And we'll talk about the role of these devices and give you, you know, my two cents worth about where we are at with this technology moving forward. The magnesium stents are exciting and are promising, and there's been two to three year follow-up now data indicating that they work similar to a permanent metallic stent. There is no increased risk of clot, as was found with the original plastic stents. So it's very encouraging. But I still feel that these devices are in the infancy of their technology, and there is still room to improve before we use them in a widespread fashion and before they completely replace the permanent metallic stents. The metal stents themselves, the permanent ones, have excellent results long term. And I get it that if we have a device that disappears, well, of course, leaving nothing behind is very, very attractive. But we have to be careful about selecting who at this point in time can or should receive one of these dissolving stents. Now, there are many criteria that we've come up with. And of course, we look at younger patients, you know, who live a much longer life with these devices long term. Well, it would be a much better scenario that these patients do not have a permanent device left, you know, beyond three or four years. But we also have to look at not only the patient factors such as their age, but it's also looking at factors within the artery itself. Plaques and cholesterol can manifest in different ways. Cholesterol itself can be the soft, fatty material, or it might be a very hard material like calcium. And calcium in the arteries can cause problems when we place these particular types of new dissolving stents. Although they have similar properties to the metal stents, they often may lack some of the strength of the metal stent. And therefore, we are very cautious about putting them in patients who have narrowings that have quite a bit of this hard calcium or hard plaque. We also want to limit the number of stents we place and the length of cholesterol that we need to treat. So if somebody has a longer blockage that needs a longer type stent, then we may elect to use the permanent stent rather than a dissolving stent. But there is no doubt there is a role for the dissolving stent. And I feel that with increasing iterations of these devices, with newer generations, we will see improved safety and we will start seeing that perhaps having a dissolving stent provides greater outcomes compared to the traditional permanent stents. And that's really what we want to see before we start saying that these devices should be used in multiple patients. Now, the devices are not available everywhere. Uh, there are many companies working on them. Uh, for example, my group is also looking at various types of devices and scaffolds and uh, polymers. And it's a matter of finding the right mix of strength in the stent that gives you the ability to keep the artery open, but not to be too rigid in terms of making it a higher risk of developing complications. One of the devices we're looking at is a very exciting technology, um, which is made of a polymer, a plastic. And this device essentially is something that we are looking to 3D print and customize to look at tailoring a device that fits an individual patient. Because we know one of the key factors as to why stents can fail 
is if they are not appropriately sized to the artery they are put in. So again, I hope you found this interesting. It's an exciting technology. I am very excited to be a cardiologist at this particular time, but I'm looking particularly at the future with an increased experience with these generation of devices that dissolve, and there will be further improvements and refinements before we use them as the first step to treating somebody with a narrowing in the arteries of the heart. Until the next video, bye for now.